Hi, this is Chris Plowman with Jai Crispy Consulting, and in this video I am going to give a brief overview of version control, or what is sometimes referred to, particularly by developers, as source control. So what is version control? Well, basically it's just keeping track of changes that occur to a file over time. So if you've ever worked on some file and decided rather than just overwriting the last copy with your changes, you would save it as a new file, maybe with your name, a date, or some number at the end of the original name, you were doing manual version control. Now you can certainly do it manually, and it works to an extent, but if you have a lot of changes, that can get a little messy. Here's an example of manual version control. You have a file A, and you make a change that you want to keep separate. So you name it revision 1, revision 2, and so on. Uh, you can do the same thing when you have multiple people working on a document. In this case, John and Sally. But you certainly end up with a lot of files. Some of the difficulties you experience with trying to do version control manually is that it can be difficult to pick and choose the changes that you want to keep. For example, if you're experimenting with something you're going to need to have some kind of naming convention so you don't confuse that change with things that you definitely want to keep. If you have several documents that work together, such as a program or even a large document like a book or a manual, it can get really difficult to match up the different versions of the various files to put them together to get the output that you want. And sometimes you might spend a lot of time just trying to figure out the differences between different versions of a file and then pulling the changes you want into a final document can really be a nightmare. Working with multiple people just amplifies the problems. Version control tools help to alleviate the problems of manual version control and can be really helpful not just to developers but anyone dealing with a lot of changes to documents. These tools will automate the manual process and provide a lot of bells and whistles to make you more productive. They make it much easier to compare different versions of a document, and when you save your changes, you can record a description of the change that you made to make it easier to find when you're looking for it later. If you've got multiple people contributing to a document, a version control system can really save you a lot of time because most of them support multiple users right out of the box. Version control systems can keep track of all of your files, so if you want to change all the documents to the way they were on a particular day, you can do that. Or you can roll back just a single file. All modern version control systems also support branching, which we'll explain in the next slide. But basically, it's useful when you have some kind of a change that you might not want to keep, or that might take a while, and you don't want to mix it in with your current version. For example, say you have a month-end report, and you've been asked to rearrange it, but you're not sure you'll have that done and approved before the month ends and it has to go out again. You could use a branch for this and be able to keep your reformatting separate from the current working version. Version control systems will also make it easy to back up your documents with all the version information. In this slide, I'm going to give you a simple model for branching. So you have file A, and maybe this is the report that I mentioned in the last slide. So you can create a new branch to do the reformatting. You make the change and submit it for approval. That takes a while and you send out another month end report. Maybe there was a problem with that and you had to make an update to it. So you have revision 1 and revision 2. Finally they get back to you uh, with a couple of tweaks to the reformatting and you make that change and now it's ready to go into production. This last step where you pull your changes back into your main development line is called a merge. If the experiment didn't go well, you can just abandon it, not do the merge, and continue on as if it never happened. There are a couple different ways that version control systems work. The traditional way was with a client server model. Here, there's some central server that houses all the changes from all the users. Then, on your local machine, the client, you would have just your working copies of all the files. So if you needed to go back to another version of a file, the version control system would go get the version that you need from the server and replace your local copy. 
Because the server has all the versions, you really need to have a pretty consistent connection to the server, either through a local network or the web typically. This is the type of model that is used by Subversion and Team Foundation server. The distributed model for versioning control is a more modern approach and provides some more flexibility than the client server model. In the distributed model, every client has a complete copy of all the changes, which is called the repository. Since you have a complete copy, you don't need to talk to any outside servers so you can work disconnected. When you want to share your changes, you can just send your repository to the people that you want, or you can copy it up to a central location for others to download. One of the big benefits here is that with a client server model, you can't really share your changes with just a couple people, at least not easily. You either upload it to the server or you don't. If you upload something that had a problem and slowed someone else down, that could make for an unpleasant situation. With the distributed model, you could send it to someone who had time to review your changes before passing it out to the whole world. Two of the most popular new versioning control systems, Mercurial and Git, both use this method. Personally, I used Subversion for quite a while and recently switched over to Mercurial, and I'm really liking the speed, the flexibility, and it also makes branching and merging much easier. In the next videos, I'll go through working with Mercurial, but that's all for now.